This is the first in a series of interviews with candidates for the Hingham Public School Committee. I had an opportunity to sit with Stephanie Gertz, a local Hingham resident. She is an educator. She has children in our public school system. She has served in the past on school committees in our neighboring communities. Let's listen to what Stephanie has to share about where she stands and what's important in our Hingham school community. Thank you, Stephanie Gertz, for joining us here on uh, Harbor Media's close-ups. So with that said, let's start with who you are as it relates to where you're from. Where did you grow up? I grew up in New York City, hence my charm and ladylike demeanor at all times. Uh, and then I was living in downtown Boston uh, when I met my husband, who has been close co-clergy of the temple in Hingham since 2004. And as I used to say, he drug me out to the suburbs. So we started our, our married life together in the South Shore in Hanover. And I was on the Hanover School Committee. And then we moved to Hingham. And we have two kids that are PRS right now. Uh, though my fifth grader, uh, my daughter, will be stepping up to middle school in September. Um, let's see. And so since I was on the school committee in Hanover, it was natural for me to think about being on the school committee in Hingham. I have a PhD in education, so it's what I know. Uh, what I studied in uh, University of Virginia, where I got my doctorate, was what works in education and what doesn't. I currently work at Cohasset as a paraprofessional, and I run a resource room for students that have been out of school for extended absences. So next September, the entire school will be in my resource room. <laughs> uh, but seriously, my room is, it ranges from kids who have had broken bones and so have been out uh, of school for a while, so use time in my room to make up their classes, kids who have concussions, who Need, who can't quite be in the classroom with the fluorescent lighting, et cetera, all day. Kids who are school avoidant, so my room is the first step to re-entry back into the school. Kids who have severe anxiety, this is their, my room is their safe place. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the University of Virginia, I studied what works and what doesn't work in education. And that's really the same lens that I brought to everything. I brought to my work on the Hanover School Committee, it's what I bring to homeschooling during the pandemic, what works and what doesn't, what works in my room. I usually, I don't always have a lot of students, but every student that I see is very unique. So I look at what's working for them uh, and, and really individualize their, their needs. And of course, bringing that perspective is what I hope to bring to the Hingham School Committee, what works and what doesn't. Let's back up a little bit about some of sure. the earlier influences. Um, yes. What even prompted you to uh, seek out public service in the context of uh, school committee? Sure. Well, if I could start a little bit either further back. Okay. When I was sure. at the University of Virginia, I started off in a psychology program. And my part-time job at the University of Virginia was tutoring the athletes. Uh, and I had had what I call a rarefied educational experience, like everything. I went to lovely schools. I went to a great college. I went to great graduate school. My parents always encouraged. Academics were always the number one priority. It, through my work at the University of Virginia, I became aware that I was in a minority and that there were all sorts of educational backgrounds and educational deficits out there. I would have students in a panic at writing a five page paper. Um, and so that's when I start, I switched to education because it suddenly seemed like a much more interesting field to me. So I was already, I was in education, I was in that mode. I had my first child in 2008. 
and I wasn't working and I wanted to be a stay at home mom for a bit, but it seemed logical to do volunteer work where my interests were. So my interests were education. So one thing led to another. So it was really a very smooth transition um, to go to school committee and sort of the logical choice for me. The experiences that you've had as a school committee member in Hanover, what yes. were some of those experiences and do you see them helping you in your role as a school committee member in Hingham? And I'm asking it from the perspective of a South Shore community at right. large. So I think what was different for me, what I needed to learn most about is I'd grown up in big cities. And so it was so interesting being in a small town. In other words, the person who was talking to me at the school committee meeting, I may run into at a grocery store the next day. And that doesn't happen as much in New York City or in Boston. Uh, by the way, I did apply for the school committee in Boston and made it to finalist. It was appointed so uh, at part of the, for a finalist, we were all interviewed by Menino. So that was a little exciting, I have to say. But it's a very different environment being involved with committee work. I was involved in committee work in the cities um, and then being involved in the South Shore. So the first thing is, these are your neighbors. These are people who live next door to you. When they come to you with a problem, again, it's not something you can dismiss. However, the answer is because you may see that person the next day. And so it's important. These are my, my uh, children's classmates, parents, and there's a big realization. And so for me, it's not been so much South Shore, but more big city versus small town, it, how that, the ramifications. And that leads me to what I learned about the parents who are most active in school committee meetings and the parents who are most likely to come are the parents who think there's a problem, right? Because if you think everything's fine, you're not likely to come to the meeting. And so when I was on school committee in Hanover, we switched the transportation companies for the special ed students who had a specialized van who brought them to school. And we switched. And on paper, it made absolute sense. It was financially, logistically, everything. It made sense. But there was real hurt for the special ed parents because that there was a change. It was a change. And what it, it led me to realize was it still might have been the right decision, but did we go about it the right way? Should we have talked more to the parents, more understanding of, particularly with this population, change is very difficult. And the old system had been working for them. So even though the new system, I think, ended up just fine, because I ended up working at the Hanover Public Schools after I um, stepped down from school committee. And so I saw it in action. And it was still, I think, the right decision. But the way we went about it may not have been the best way. There needs to be more input from the parents. And that certainly brought home to me Listen, it's a very different world from when I pulled papers in January. The job is going to be very different. But the core part will be the same in that, wow, do we need to listen to the parents? And I want that to be one of the, the core values that I will represent. It doesn't mean that everything the parents says we're going to do, but we have to listen to the parents to, to see what the, they are really one of our major constituencies. So arguably the students are our biggest constituency, but the parents are really our partners in making sure anything happens. Stephanie, what do you see as uh, some of the short-term challenges, the needs in our Hingham Public Schools? Well, the first, of course, is the budget. And so I would have said that in January and I'm saying it now, but now it's very different. Um, in January, I had goals, and I would have given you a whole speech about the positions we need to fill and things we need to hire. I don't know if that's possible now. I think we're going to have a lot more, for instance, physical plant expenditures as we put up barriers, which I have to say that's a sentence that hurts me. To think of putting up barriers at a school, socially distancing the students, it, it's hard. It's hard to imagine. But I think there's certain things that the budget we're just gonna have to do that stuff first so that it's safe for kids to come back to school. 
one of the things that great gave me that heartened me was earlier this week there was a it was a joint meeting of the selectmen and the uh, school committee and i don't know if you were there for that meeting um and they talked about the budget and what they were going to present to town meeting and what was clear at the meeting was the spirit of cooperation so really i'm not sure if they would all agree with me when i say that the upshot at the meeting is we don't know <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know exactly what's going to happen with their dollars because we don't know what the state's going to do. Uh, we don't know what our state aid's going to be. And that's such a huge portion of our budget. But it was clear that the selectmen and the school committee are committed to doing right by our students and our schools. And we're going to do the best we can. So the budget's a big problem, but it's a lot more amorphous than it was again when I pulled papers in January. In the new norm, yes, which as a cliche, it it can be anything, but clearly not like we know it or knew it to be in the past. That is, children gathering up as a community in the cafeteria, right down to just children getting on a school bus and making their way right. to the to, to the to the school building. And you talked about physical plant and the like. In this new norm, what are some key areas that you can think of that you hope to, that we hold on to uh, and try to maintain going forward for our, our children in Hingham? One thing is I'd like to see, and we've seen this, I've seen this, is kindness, is, is it a gentleness. I, I never thought I would use the word tenderness in an interview, but there's a real care that we've started to use um, when dealing with folks. And I'd like to see that continue because we all have day-to-day -day problems with the pandemic, whether it's technology is letting us down, whether it's we want to go outside and do something, we want to go to the moon, you know, there are all sorts of things. Um, but then I, I think one of the things that not everyone has yet realized because of this pandemic spread, everyone you're talking to is affected. Um, somebody might appear fine, but maybe their spouse has lost their job. And we don't know them, but the whole market may have disappeared for what that job action is. So it's not a, okay, we'll get on my feet and do resumes. How do you job hunt in this area? Mm -hmm. um, in this time, uh, they, they could easily have lost a relative to the pandemic. So I want us to have that tenderness with us to realize that everyone we're talking to has in some way been affected, could be affected, and, and we don't know. But because of the, the horrible spread of this, it is likely that everyone we're talking to has some direct connection and has suffered some sort of loss related to this. Let's recap, and I'm gonna ask you to identify three big important things that you want okay. the voters to know about where you stand, what you stand on as a candidate for a school committee. Great, okay, so one of the things is communication. I think um, we have ways before all this happened, I thought there are ways we could improve our communication. There were some things that were working out well, some things not. I think during the pandemic, it's been brought into high relief. So I want to, communication will be improved. Communication all the way down the line. Internal communication, so the principals are talking with the same words that the superintendent is using. So I want communication to be consistent and stable throughout the district. But then I also want our communications to parents, to teachers, to all the constituents to be the same, to be thorough, um, and to to incorporate everybody into the process as much as possible and let everyone know what's going on. So communication is the most important thing uh, to me. And I really see my job, especially uh, as I start, but my job is really is to listen. Like, what, what, what do we need to do? So there's a lot of uh, communication in every sort of way you want to define it. I also want to see, and it relates to the consistency, it relates to communication is consistency. For instance, 
some of our schools celebrate certain holidays and are aware of certain holidays for different religious faiths. Other schools are not. It's very simple to have a master calendar come out from the central office that's attributed to all the schools. There's no reason for everyone to have to go to calendars that may or may not be right. May, you know, let's get one calendar done. So there's a lot of consistency issues that I'd like to see. Um, particularly since I have kids in the elementary school, I've become much more aware of how different all the elementary schools are. Some of that's good, some of it maybe is not so good. So let's look at what is the flavor of an elementary school, and I don't wanna take away the flavor, but what's the substantive piece, and should everyone be getting that? When I was in Hanover, uh, no longer an office, there was, a decision to, to redo, redistrict. Is redistrict or reorganization? In other words, we had two elementary schools that were both K through four, and it was changed uh, to pre-K through one and two through four. So two elementary schools, but now two different ones. And one of the reasons given to me for the change was that the middle school teachers found it very uh, upsetting that all the fourth graders hadn't read the same books. And I was like, well, I don't think you need to change the schools to do that. Can't you just make sure that we have safe books in the fourth grade? That didn't seem like, that seemed like the odd way to solve that particular problem. Um, so I, as I look at the elementary schools, I'd be very curious to have the conversation again with the middle school and say, what are the sixth grade teachers finding? Are they finding, oh, this elementary school is better at this, this is that? And again, there could be flavors, it could change from year to year, but are there real changes that we need to look at so that the elementary schools are moving um, along the same path? Uh, so they're getting to middle school the same way. So communication, consistency, and I wish I could think of it enough of a C. Maybe for a budget, we can say cost. <laughs> That could I, work. I think the budget is an ongoing issue. I expect it always to be an issue. One of the things that I'd like to bring to the table, and again, this may take, uh, the timeline is different than when I thought I would, I thought about this in January. Um, I want to look at new pockets of money rather than there seems to be an area of, oh, you're taking from the seniors to fund the schools, things of that nature. I don't want to take money from any other group. I want to look at maybe there's some ways of generating money. Now, one of the thoughts I had, which is completely ridiculous at this time, but hopefully won't be in a year, is maybe there's a restaurant tax that we can think about putting to the schools. Again, not something to talk about at this moment, but I would you know, like to talk about it at another point. I'd like to look at some of our facility use. Again, at this point, nobody's looking for large crowds, but maybe the high school could rent out a field, could rent out the cafeteria, and that would generate new income. Again, I haven't looked at these in detail because right now it doesn't make sense to, but that, that will be my, um, platform, so to speak, is that I really want to look at generating new sources of income. So it's not a sense of we're taking from another group to fund this, because I never want to get into a conversation, what's more important, the police and the fire or the school, you know, this, that's not going to get us anywhere. We're all in this together. But let's look at some ways to generate some new dollars. And that's, I think that long term will solve our bridge of problems. Final thoughts before we conclude. What would you like to share? Let's see. Bottom line, I think Hingham is an amazing town. I think it's filled with so many people who do care. And I think we care about everyone. We care about our nurses and our doctors, our healthcare workers. We care about our police, our fire departments, and we care about our schools. And I'm excited to be part of a town part of the governance of a town that cares so much about its people and about other people's. Um, and I'd like the chance to contribute in that way. Well, Stephanie Gertz, educator, wife, mother of two, and candidate for the Hingham School Committee, we thank you so much for your time. Continue to stay safe, continue to stay healthy to you and your family, and good luck in the election.
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you.